Welcome to another episode of Field Phone Ops. Today we're going to be talking about the British and Commonwealth Forces Fuller Phone Mark V. So uh, sit back and uh, hope we all learn something. And this is my Fuller Phone Mark V. Uh, this unit was built in about 1943 or 44 and used by the British during World War II. Um, basically, uh, the British came up with this. It was an interesting solution. It's not really a phone. It's actually a low-level DC tele telegraph machine. What happened during the First World War, the, which was basically the heyday of the field phone in, uh, in wartime use, everybody had field phones, and they used what was called ground return wiring, which meant they would stick a stake, sometimes just a bayonet in the ground, connect one wire to it, and one wire would be connected to the one terminal of the field phone, You'd run a single wire to wherever the other field phone was several miles away, and it worked like that. The problem with that is as everybody was doing it, you had hundreds, probably thousands of field phones doing like this, and you could eavesdrop on each other. And the Germans became very proficient at this and actually learned of some British offense, offenses, actions, and patrols and that before... Uh, the British executed it, and basically that was some of the issues the British had at the Battles of the Somme, where they got massacred. The Germans knew the exact timetable of the attack, the artillery barrage, how long it would last, everything. So they could sit back and just wait for the British and just mow them down with machine guns, and that's what happened. Well, the British uh, staff, their whatever, their high commander, whatever, started getting really paranoid that they had spies. They got spies, they got spies. So. Uh, they, a team of civilian experts and technicians came over and looked at the problem and said, no, it's not spies, it's the problem is these ground currents. Everybody's listening to what's being said. So the only solution we really have is to stop using the field phones or uh, not talk about classified or potential classified data on them or uh, run a second wire and use a pair of wires that will cut down on all these ground currents and that. Well, Realistically, that wasn't a solution because they had thousands of miles of field wire already out. They'd have to double the number and go through the whole problem of running field wire. While this was going on, there was a young captain named A.C. Fuller who was in the Royal Engineers, and he came up with this device, and it was the Fuller phone. Basically, this is it right here. It's basically a low-level DC uh, telegraph. Basically, they did use telegraphs at the time. They'd been using war, and they were clunky units, and they used what was called buzzers or real loud clankers and use real uh, high level uh, current on the, the lines when you were actually tapping signals out so they could be listened to. But the fuller phone, which was ingenious about it, was it uses very, very low, uh, it's in the uh, actual uh, microamp range, that uh, you couldn't hear on a telephone. So you could hook a telephone, a telephone line and try to eavesdrop, you couldn't hear anything. And the British hooked that up and they loved it. Um, the Germans had no clue what was going on. Um, the British basically came out with actual units that were basically a, a uh, actual telegraph key with a headset to listen to, and they actually had some units that just hooked up to their existing field phone. So away they went. They worked. It got to the point during the war. They, the British fielded a lot of them. Was uh, a fuller phone was never allowed to be captured, and the fuller phone operators were never allowed to be taken prisoner. That was how sensitive it was, and it worked really good. The British also discovered the interesting thing about it was not only did it work on telephone lines that were horrible. You have a, you could have a uh, phone wire for a field phone. You couldn't talk on because it was so noisy, but the full phone would go right through it. And the other thing that was neat about it was you could run a fuller phone and a field phone on the same wire circuit at the same time, and neither one would interfere with each other, which was an interesting thing to do. They would do that. Um, range was about 10 to 15 miles which is pretty good for what it was. Um, between the wars, the British really were impressed by this and sunk a lot of money into it, and they basically improved the reliability and the sensitivity of the, the system itself. So when World War II started up, all the British Commonwealth forces used these right here. And uh, they used them extensively in uh, North Africa, and a lot of the fighting in the Southwest Pacific that the uh, Australians and New Zealanders um, Bougainville, uh, New Guinea, Burma, some of those places saw extensive uses of fuller phones. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and shut down. We'll go ahead and open it up and we'll look the inside. 
Okay, this is it right here. It had this cover right here. It had a little clips. You lifted it up and you folded the lid up. Oh. <laughs> it was actually a plywood case. Really good workmanship. It has the instructions on how to operate it right here. Um, this actually held it in this position right here. I'll get this stuff out. So it wouldn't jump around when uh, it was being transported. So we'll go ahead and get it out. It comes with a, uh, a headset. Um, the, the unit itself could be used in the case like it is right now, or you could slide it out, or actually slide it forward, which I'll do right here. Actually, I'll take it all the way out of the case. It's easier to see. And that's it right there. That's the fuller phone. Um, battery compartment right here flips up. It holds two 1.5 volt batteries, which it uses. Um, binding post right here, connect your field wire to. Uh, the headset actually plugged into one of these headset jacks right here. There's two of them. This uh, was a potentiometer. It allowed you to adjust almost like the volume level inside the uh, the uh, speaker, the headset, if you were using this switch. And this switch right now is a interesting. It's a, it's a uh, polarity reversing switch. And one of the problems that, not really a, tro a problem, but it made the fuller phone not work the best sometimes was when you had a ground return circuit, sometimes you got stray currents in the ground which would make it hard to hear the tones in a fuller phone. So by changing the polarity and adjusting the, this right here, almost like a volume switch, you could get it so you could hear it. Now the Morse keys right here. Uh, the most important thing about the fuller phone, this is the key to it right here. This is what's called, they called the buzzer chopper. And what this did was it allowed them to take uh, just real low level DC current on the circuit and the buzzer chopper basically allows you to turn that into an audible tone that the operator could hear. And uh, the operators would have to set it up. Actually as their, their shift went on they would adjust these knobs so they could hear what was called uh, the, the unit sing and I'll turn it on hopefully it will sing. If you can hear that or not, that real, line, that real faint tone is the actual buzzer chopper working. Uh, as long as you could hear that tone, you could hear it singing, it would work. You could send and receive messages. Um, you can't hear anything there, but if I put the handset or the headset, I'll try to put it up by the, the camera so you maybe can hear. I don't know how we can hear it, but that's how it was. Um, and, and they would send messages back and forth. Um, Actually, during the war, um, they actually did an experiment when World War II started. The uh, British were concerned about losing a lot of their uh, telegraph and cable offices overseas, especially in the Southwest Pacific when the Japanese are on the, on the run or on the, the march. So they actually had a British company do an experiment, and they actually went 700 miles on an underwater cable using two floor sets, and it worked, and you could hear it. Um, they were used all the way through World War II. They were used in the Korea, but as of the, I want to call it the electronics, the electronics got better, amplifiers got better. It got to the point where they could take a uh, vacuum tube amplifier and hook it up, and they could stick stakes and run, and you could hear, hear the fuller phone. And that's sort of where it ended at. But this is it right here. The British used them, made thousands of them. Um, this one, like I said, was made in uh, the, the 43 or 44. It still works. You hear the how we can hear the tone. Um, that's it. Um, the interesting thing about it was uh, I haven't been finding anything that I have, even amplifiers, that I can put on these binding posts and hear when I'm typing out a message, even though I can hear in the headset that it's doing dots and dashes. So that's the main thing I'm looking at. I, I, I can't really demonstrate any more than this. I guess I'd have to get another fuller set that I could hook up and uh, type messages up so you could actually hear it. Well, that's it. This is a a British uh, Fuller Phone Mark V. Thanks for watching.